So one thing I hear about is, um, I guess I, the, the word fancy comes to mind, but that's probably yeah. the right word. This idea of um, super special windows, like maybe for passive houses, this um, like European triple pane, super duper. Um, I don't mean to be funny. Uh, there's this idea of like a European window, maybe for a passive house that works better. Is that like a whole different class of window as opposed to sort of regular windows, single pane, double pane? I mean, there are all these factors like, you know, the low E windows, like sometimes we don't really know when we're doing the research, what all of these terms mean and, and what, what brings you into a different quality level or efficiency level? Like what, how super duper does your window have to be? Or at some point are people spending to get a level of efficiency and quality that they, they don't have to for the house they're building? Um, so let me start with just the, the, the parts of the window and the certifications that go into a window. And we've got the different windows here. We have the European window. We also have the shot built window. Now I could buy that European window and the shot built window. And if you look at some of the ratings on it, like the U factor, we talked about that. Like what's the difference between like a U and an R factor. So R value in a wall could be 16, it could be 20. U, U value is always gonna be the inverse of that. When you get into like the modeling stuff, sometimes you wanna convert everything to U or R to do like the average efficiency for the wall, uh, the, the whole wall assembly. But for right now, most windows are based on a U factor, which is basically just the, the I'm sorry, the reciprocal of, of the R value. So if this, is, if this window right here is an R, three window, the U, the U value is going to be 0.33. It's just basically one, one over three. And that's how you come up with this. So basically the lower the number for U, the, the lower you get to, to zero, which means, which means it's a better performing window from an insulation point of view. So that's thermal resistance. We're talking about that. So that's only one component of what I'm looking for in a window. There's also the solar heat gain coefficient. So the solar heat gain coefficient is another number, and that has to do with that low E coating that you put on the window. So if you just have a single pane of glass, no coating on it, the solar heat gain coefficient is probably gonna be one, and I've actually seen numbers where it's actually above one, where as soon as you put that coating on it, you've got a double, and, and typically the, it has to work with a, a double pane because you're actually applying it towards the in, one of the insides of the, the double pane. Because if you have it on the outside, or the inside, like where you can touch it, it can, it can scrape off, it's very sensitive to that. So you've got that, and there's, you also have gases that you stick in between that also help with some of the thermal resistance, but also the, the coating is mostly for the solar heat gain coefficient. So you would think that you want to block as much of the sun out as possible, so you want that lower number, yes and no. So if you're in a hot weather climate and all that sun's coming into the house. So if you're in Florida, if you're in Miami, let's, let's, let's just let's, let's use Miami and Maine. They kind of have that nice alliteration to it. So in Miami, I want a lower, heat, lower solar heat gain coefficient because I have a lot of cooling degree days, means the air conditioning's running more often than the heat's running. I, I doubt in Miami you're, you're hardly ever running the heat at all if you have, uh, you're probably not running the heat at all. So you're trying to block the energy from the sun from coming into the house and basically heating up the space because the air conditioning is having to work harder. So this is actually gonna lower your energy bills if you have that lower solar heat gain coefficient. If you're in Maine, you want a higher heat gain, solar heat gain coefficient because you want that because you have more heating degree days than you have coin degree days. So that's actually gonna be a higher number. And sometimes with passive house, like we're playing with the numbers, the solar heat gain coefficient. So energy star and code is at one place. And sometimes I try to go as low as possible for most of our houses. We actually end up going a little bit higher than expected on our passive house that we're doing here in Georgia because we're using some of that, that the sun's energy to heat the space during the winter time, but also it needs to be enough where it's not letting too much energy in during the summertime because we're, we're kind of balanced. But in Maine, you're gonna have a much higher solar heat gain coefficient in Massachusetts than we would here in Georgia because you have you want more of the sun's energy to come into the house during the winter time and kind of help heat the space and, and supplement the, the heating on the space. The climate variation is much more important than I initially realized because you want to just ask as a non, you know, non builder, non window professional, you know, Hey, what's just the best window. And as, as you're pointing out, the answer really varies by what you are and it, where you are. 
and what your goals are um, for your particular house. Like, are you welcoming the sun's energy because it's cold most of the year? Or actually, are you, you know, trying to keep out some of that heat because it's hot most of the year? And, you know, in terms of orientation too, what are you, you know, what are your energy bills? And, and, exactly. your limit? and also like with, with the windows, like the windows on the, if you really, really want to get into it, the windows on the west and east side would have a different, you know, if, if, you're, if you're doing with the perfect window or perfect design, would have a different solar heat gain coefficient than the south side or the north side. You could actually have a higher solar heat gain coefficient on the north side of the house in North America because you're not going to have any direct sunlight coming in. So that doesn't really matter. So if you're trying to save some money, that's what you could do, but I wouldn't risk it because most people aren't smart enough to try to try to figure that out. Thanks, Matt. There's a lot of great information here. I think that will really help people as they think about their windows, actually, as they think about their whole home and their design and energy and health and comfort goals. I wish we'd had this conversation before I replaced my own windows, but um, I hope this information, I know this information will help a lot of other people out there and certainly including our members. So thank you very much. Hey, not a problem. And, and the good news is we've talked to lots of different window manufacturers. So we have a full playlist, not only this video, if you want to make sure that you have all the questions answered uh, regarding to like these windows, but also other windows in the past, we're, we're going to have like 10 to 20 videos in that playlist. So make sure you hit that playlist over there, hit the like and subscribe button so you can get more great content just like this.